Hello, my precious ones. Welcome back to Storytime with Auntie S. And I'm so glad you're here for things. But today, our story is The Brave Little Taylor. Taylor is somebody who kind of fixes up clothes for people. One morning, a little tailor sat in his shop. He bent over his work, sewing as he always did this time of day. Suddenly, the tailor had a taste for raspberry jelly. He took out a loaf of bread and cut a big slice from it. The tailor licked his lips as he spread on some jelly. I am more hungry than I thought, he told himself. I sure hope this jelly fills my belly and, and clears my head. The tailor wanted to sew a few more stitches before eating his snack. When he finished, he saw a swarm of flies buzzing around his tasty jelly. The little man waved the flies away with his hand, but they flew right back. The tailor grabbed a scrap of cloth and growled, Now I'll let you have it. The cloth, bur cloth, the cloth burst through the air as the tailor beat at the buzzing flies. And there's the tailor, and there is the bread and the jelly and the flies, and he's trying to get rid of the flies. Have you ever had a picnic or something and flies and ants are all over? They're trying to get to your food, aren't they? When he lifted the cloth away, seven flies, he had, gotten, he had gotten those flies. And he was excited because he had done that with his cloth. He said, the whole world should know of my skills, said the tailor. He cut a belt just his size with his finest thread. He sewed these words, seven in one blow. The tailor tied the red belt around his waist. I feel the need for an adventure. This is a picture when he has his cloth and he gets some of the flies that were flying, seven of them. The tailor looked for something useful to take with him on his big adventure. All he found was an old piece of cheese. He put it in his pocket and as he was locking the door, he heard a rustle in the bushes. A bird was trapped among the thorns. The tailor gently pulled the bird from the bush he put it in his pocket with this cheese, and then he set out to find an adventure. The tailor walked through town and up the side of a mountain. At the top, he met a, he met a giant. Hello, giant, said the tailor with a bow. I am on a big adventure. Will you join me? A little man like you on a big adventure, rumbled the giant. For an answer, the tailor showed him his belt that said, Seven in one blow. The giant, who is not very smart, thought that the belt meant seven men, not flies. He found it very hard that this tiny little tailor could kill seven men with one blow. So he decided to test the tailor's strength. And there's the, the uh, giant. He looks kind of funny, huh? You can even see his belly button. <laughs> and then there's the little tailor with his belt. So the, the giant says, you must be very strong. Can you do this? Asked the giant. He picked up a stone and squeezed it until water dripped from the stone. The tailor was obviously not as strong as the giant, but he was much more clever. Watch this, the little tailor said as he took something from his pocket. The giant thought it was a stone too, but it was actually a piece of cheese. The tailor squeezed it in his hand until liquid whey dripped from his palm. He was fooling the, the giant, wasn't he? The giant raised his eyebrows. Well, can you do this? He asked. He picked up another stone and tossed it high into the air. It flew almost out of sight. Watch this, the tailor said as he took something from his pocket. It was the bird, of course. With a toss of his hand, the tailor sent the little bird flying. Pretty soon, the bird was out of sight. In fact, it never came down. So there's the tailor throwing the bird up in the sky, and this is the back of the giant. This did not convince the giant, though. He was a poor loser. If you are so strong, he said, help me carry this tree. Once again, the tailor knew that he was not as strong as the giant. He quickly came up with an idea. 
The tailor walked to the leafy end of the fallen oak. I will carry the branches, he said. I wouldn't want them to scratch you. Besides, it is no trouble for one who can hit se can kill seven with one blow. The giant lifted the trunk onto his shoulder. He could not see the tailor at the other end. The tailor knew this. He hopped onto the branches and let the giant do all the work. Hmm. When the giant looked back at the tailor, he saw that he was not even tired. Perhaps you would like to come home with me and meet my friend, said the giant with an evil gleam in his eye. Certainly, the clever tailor replied. The giant took the tailor to his cave. A group of giants sat around a roaring fire. Oh, I didn't show you this picture. This is the picture of the giant and the giant is carrying the, the uh, tree. And he's just sitting in the branches. The tailor's just sitting in the branches. Uh, so now he's, he's with the other giants. And they watched as their friend led the little man into the cave. You can sleep here, said the giant, pointing to a giant-sized bed. Even a man who can kill seven in one blow needs to rest. Hmm, what do you think the giant's trying to do? The tailor was not used to sleeping in such a big bed. So he slept in a corner instead. It was good for him that he did. During the night, the giants pounded on the bed with clubs until they thought they had taken care of that pesky tailor. In the morning, the giants went swimming in the river. They joked about the strange man in his silly belt. When the tailor walked up whistling a to merry tune, the giants were so afraid they ran away without their uh, clothes. <laughs> the tailor laughed and left the giants behind. And there the giants are swimming. And then there's all their clothes over here. And then there's the tailor. And they were so afraid of him that they ran away. The tailor walked very far and then he lay down for a nap. As the tailor slept, some people found him and read his belt. They thought he was a mighty soldier and took him to meet their king. The king was impressed and hired him for his army. He also gave him a bag of gold. But the other soldiers were angry at this new soldier. That's not fair, they told the king. We will leave your army if we don't get a bag of gold too. The king could not lose his whole army. He decided to get rid of his new soldier. He went to the little man with a challenge. I need you to kill two giants who live in my woods. If you do, I will give you my daughter and half my kingdom. Wow. The tailor knew that this was his chance to become a hero. The next morning, the tailor rode off to find the giants with a hundred soldiers behind him and a brilliant plan. Stay behind until I call you, he told the soldiers at the end of the woods. He found two giants asleep under a tree. He climbed the tree and began dropping acorns on one giant's head. The giant awoke and turned to his friend. Why did you wake me by thumping my head, roared the giant. So there they are. They're asleep on the ground. And then these are the feet of the shoes of the tailor up in the tree, dropping acorns on the head of one of the giants. Hmm. Before his friend could answer, the angry giant threw an acorn at him. The two giants fought each other until both fell dead. The tailor called the king's soldiers to see what he had done. They were amazed. The new soldier had, didn't even have a scratch. Two giants are easy. Try seven in one blow, said the tailor. The king heard about the tailor's great feat, but didn't want to give up his daughters and, and half his riches yet. He ordered them to catch a unicorn that was scaring the village. The tailor agreed to go, but only if he could go alone. The king agreed, so off to the woods, the tailor went looking for the unicorn. Suddenly, the tailor saw the unicorn rush, running right towards him. He stood perfectly still. Just as the unicorn reached him, the tailor jumped out of the way. He had been standing in front of a tree. The unicorn's horn stuck fast to the tree's hard wood. The tailor freed the unicorn and rode it back to the palace in a cloud of dust. Again, the king was amazed to see the tailor. The king had no choice but to keep his promise. 
He could not prove that the man who married his daughter and took half of his kingdom was nothing but a hero. The tailor almost gave up his secret one night, though. While he was sleeping, his new wife heard him say, this new fabric will make a fine waistcoat. Waist, waist, a coat. <laughs> the princess leapt out of bed and hid behind a curtain, hoping her husband would reveal more of his true identity. And there's the tailor asleep in his bed, or, although I think his eyes are open, so I think he, we're going to learn a little bit more. And there's the, the daughter of the king, the princess, that was now the wife of the tailor. But the clever tailor, yep, he was awakened by his wife's movement, and he quickly realized what he had said in his sleep. I, I mean, a, a prince and a man who can kill seven with one blow should have the finest waistcoat around, right? He was being, he was silly, but he was, he was very clever. He knew he wasn't very strong, but he was very clever. So he was able to use his mind to take care of his problems. So that's just something to think about. Well, you know, as always that I pray for you and I love you and I will see you next time. Bye.